All right, let's get into the word on today. Um, this is a very, very familiar text, very familiar text, but let's look at it. Today we're coming from Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Not a strange word to many. Very, very familiar. Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to look at verses 25 through 34. All right, let's look at it. Matthew 6, verses 25 through 34. All right, it reads as follows. It says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. It's not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about his own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Amen. If you're taking notes today, I'm coming from the topic, don't worry. Don't worry. It is no doubt, Grace Center, that many of us, we need to take the advice of that singer, Bobby McFerrin, when he said, don't worry, be happy. You see, many of us, many of us, we just simply worry too much. We worry about if we're going to receive the phone call. We worry about if we're going to get the job. If our child is going to pass through the next grade, if we want to be able to make the payment, is all of this even going to work out? And we constantly worry and we worry and we worry. And it is said that many of the things that we even worry about will not even come true. Yeah. A lot of the things that we stay up late at night thinking about pacing the floor about the things that we have at the forefront of our minds, those things will never come to pass. We just simply worry too much. And Grace Center, the activity of worrying, it is draining to just be worried about things all of the time. It is stressful. This theologian, this individual, Corey Ten Boom, they say, worry does not empty tomorrow of sorrows, it empty today of strength. Let me say that again. Worry does not empty tomorrow of sorrows, it empties today of strength. You see, when you worry, you lose strength that you're going to need for tomorrow. And it's hard to defeat your enemies tomorrow when you do not have the strength today. God does not want us to worry. And we're going to look at why God does not want us to worry. Let's look at verse 25 again. It says, 
Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. It's not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Now, this is Jesus talking and he's telling us not to worry. And the first thing he says about not worrying is don't worry about your life regarding what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink. Jesus says don't worry or don't have anxiety of how you are going to be fed. Okay, He said do not worry about that. Okay, But not only should you not worry about how I'm going to feed you, don't worry about having clothes on your back. Now, you may read this and you may say, well, Jesus is not empathetic here. It may even seem like Jesus is not concerned about how you're going to live and how you're going to make it. But you have to remember, Grayson, you have to remember who is doing the talking. You see, Jesus is the one that is talking. Jesus is the one that said, don't Worry about what you're going to eat or what you are going to drink. Don't, don't worry about what you are going to wear. And you see, Grace Center, we have to start, uh, we have to look at the one here in the text who is doing the talking. And if Jesus says, don't worry, guess what? We should not worry. We should not have a panic attack. We should not fall into a state of despair. But when it seems like the walls are caving in on us, we should remember the one that was doing the talking. We should remember the one that says we need to lift up our eyes to the hills so it's coming forth our help. And where does our help come from? Our help, it comes from the Lord. And I don't know about you, Grayson, but I'm so glad that here in this text, as we read it, that Jesus is the one that's doing the talking. The one that always has been, always will be. Jesus is the one that's doing the talking. And since Jesus is the one that's doing the talking and telling us, okay, his creation not to worry, we should not worry. But the text, it doesn't stop there. Jesus is still talking, and in verse 26, he says, Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Now, these passages here, Grace, they took place in what we call the Sermon on the Mount. So Jesus is teaching and he's teaching outside here on the Sermon on the Mount. And maybe as he's teaching outside, he probably sees some birds nearby. And for illustrative purposes, he probably just uh, incorporated the birds into his sermon. <laughs> yeah, he's saying you should not even worry about how you're going to eat, how you're going to drink, how you are going to be fed. And he incorporated the birds into this message. He said, don't you have more value than these birds that you see? Don't you have more value than they? You see, Grace Center, with us and do our normal day living, we see dead animals, dead birds all of the time. But guess what? We don't lose any sleep over them. Why? Because they're not at the forefront of our minds. A dead bird on the side of the street, we would not lose any sleep over that. Why? Because they're of lesser value. They, 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 they were created under us. They, they, they don't hold the same kind of value in which we have. And Jesus, he's saying, they're just birds. If I could take care of them, I'm going to take care of you. It's just a bird. So if the bird should not worry, why are you worrying? If I feed them, I'm going to feed you. 
If I take care of them, I'm going to take care of you. He said, you don't have to worry about how you're going to live from day to day. I am the one that's going to take care of them. And you see, Grace Center, God has set up this world in such a way that animals can live without the intervention of man. But watch this. Man cannot live without the intervention of God. Let me say it one more time. Animals can live without the intervention of man, but man cannot live without the intervention of God. And since God knows what we need and when we need it, he knows when to show up and when to open the door, when to close the door. He knows how to make a way when a way needs to be made. God says, I will take care of you just like I take care of these birds. But it doesn't stop there. Uh, verse 27, let's look at that. It says, which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his statue? The Living Bible translation says it like this. It says, will all your worries add a single moment to your life? Wow. And that's deep. Well, all of the things that you're worried about, is it going to add anything to your life whatsoever? Grace Center, when you worry, it does not add to your life, but watch this, it actually subtracts from your life. Worrying doesn't add to it, it subtracts from it. Worrying can cause headaches, it can cause diseases, it can cause you to have an early exit to the grave. The sin of worry is a thief. It steals your thoughts. It steals your time. It steals your freedom. It steals your happiness. And Bobby McFerrin, he was on to something when he said, don't worry, just be happy. You see, happiness is a choice. But it's hard for you to choose happiness if you're focused on worry. And if you focus on worry, you choose to worry rather than be happy. And many people, watch this, many individuals, they are held hostage by worry. Worry has them tied up to so many things and worry has their minds tied up. Worry tells them, I'm not Going to let you go. And many people, watch this, many individuals cannot move because they are tied to worry. Many people can't think because they're tied to worry. And if you're tied to worry today, as you're watching this, this broadcast, as you're watching this service on our different platforms, if you're tied to worry, you're in the right place. You are in the right place today if worry has your mind stayed on it. If, 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 if worry is at the forefront of your mind on a day-to-day -day basis, you are in the right place today. Because I hope that by the time you listen to this message, that by the power of the Holy Ghost, that whatever your mind is worrying about whatever you're thinking about whatever has held you down that today you'll be set free today you'll be delivered and today that the bondage of worry that we'll be able to loose the shackles of worry off of your mind on today grace and sometimes we have to Stop letting our problems talk to us, but we start back talking to our problems. Yeah. Sometimes the problems and the issues, they will consistently and constantly talk at us. And when they talk to us and at us, it, it stays in our minds and it's, it's hard for us to, to, to get rid of those thoughts that has infiltrated our minds. 
But when they talk to us, sometimes we have to talk right back to it again. We have to quote scripture back to whatever is talking to us. He said, my God, he is Jehovah Jireh. He is my provider. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is the God that heals. When our problems talk to us, we have to talk right back to our problems. It's like the story of David and Goliath. Goliath was this, this giant, and he used to come out every day just talking and talking. He was putting fear in the minds of anyone that even thought about going up against him. So the big, tall bully Goliath would come out and, you know, say threatening things to, to others, and everyone was afraid of Goliath. Until one day, David came out to feed his brothers at the request of his father, Jesse. And as David is out there feeding his brothers, he hear the talk of Goliath. David does not like what he hears from this giant, just talking and uh, leashing out threats and so forth. So David decided to take matters into his own hands. Long story short, David took on Goliath. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this one that's not in covenant hey, with my God? And since he's not in covenant with my God, but I am, I know that if I go against this giant, I know I have the upper hand because that giant does not have a covenant with my God. He does not have a promise over his life. But since I do, and since I have a covenant, since I have a promise over my life, I'm not going to let something that's bigger than me talk to me and threaten me and I crawl back into my cubbyhole. No, I'm, I'm going to talk right back to the job. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this one talking to me like that? What is this problem that is talking to me? What is the issue that is coming at me? Grace of sometimes... You have to talk back to your problems and tell your problems, look, you do not have a covenant. You do not have a promise with my God. I am a child of the God of the Most High. And since he has made me a promise telling me that he's going to take care of me, he's going to provide for me, he's going to cover me, he's going to protect me, I'm going to trust my God. Grace and sometimes you have to talk back to your problems and put your problems where they need to be and that's in the back seat of your lives <laughs> as you continue to read here grace center jesus watch this he began to compare clothes that were put on uh, to the lilies of the field watch this verse 29 he says and yet i say to you that even solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Watch this. Besides Jesus Christ, Solomon was the wisest man to ever walk the face of the earth. And here Jesus says that there was no comparison when it came to how, uh, how he was clothed and how beautifully clothed the flowers were compared to Solomon. So it was no comparison. Translation, although Solomon was wise, when it came down to him dressing himself, he was not able to outshine the flowers. Let me say that again. Although King Solomon was the wisest man ever, okay, he could think, he could uh, rationalize, okay, but yet, he could not dress himself, no matter how much he, he tried to outshine the flowers, no matter how many beautiful robes and uh, uh, attire he had, he could not outshine the flowers that God made. <laughs> and if God, watch this, if God is able to have flowers outshine the clothing and the wardrobe, 
of one of the wisest men ever, don't you think that God is able to place clothes on our backs? <laughs> this is a plant that we're talking about as far as flowers. It's, it's, it's just a plant that we're talking about. And yet, God says that if I can take care of a plant, I can make sure that I can take care of you. A plant is just something that you just put in the dirt. Okay, you, you, you put a seed in the dirt and the plant will eventually grow up. Okay, he said, if I can take care of that, I can take care of you. If I can take care of birds and plants, I can take care of you. Now, many of you may say, well, Pastor, you, you, you just don't understand. You don't, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't, you don't know the phone calls I'm receiving. You, you don't know the mail I'm receiving in my mailbox every week. Pastor, you just don't understand what I'm going through. Well, this is my advice to you. If I don't understand, God does. If man does not understand, God does. Watch this. And all that you may have been praying to God, you may have been crying out to him from day to day, from week to week, even from month to month. If you have been crying out to God and it seems like God is not listening, trust me, he's listening. There's a very familiar text to many found in the word of God, which is found in Mark chapter 6. In Mark chapter 6, it tells the story of how the disciples were in this storm and the winds were contrary and going against the disciples. But Jesus saw the activity the entire time from the mountaintop. Jesus went up to the mountaintop to pray. And as he's on the mountaintop, he's looking down. He can see his disciples struggling in a storm. As he sees his disciples struggling in a storm, he does not leave the mountaintop right away. But he stays where he's at for a while. But he's looking down and he can see his disciples, his followers, the ones that love him, the ones that glean from his word, the ones that are right there with him from day to day. Jesus sees his disciples in the midst of a storm. But Jesus does not rush to the aid of his disciples. But he sees what they're going through. <laughs> he knows what's happening. All right. He sees what's going on. But he does not rush to get to the aid and to help out his disciples, his followers. Okay. But... As they continue to struggle and as the wind is contrary to them because they're trying to make it. They're trying to get through. They're trying to, to get to the other side. Okay. And sometimes it's just like us. We're trying to get to the other side. We're trying to make it. Okay. We have goals and objectives and plans and aspirations and Things that we're trying to do in life. We're trying to provide for our families. We're trying to, to provide for our kids. We, we, we want a roof over our head. We want food in the refrigerator. We want clothes on our backs. We want to live a peaceful life. But sometimes the wind is contrary to us. And we're praying to God and saying, God, do you hear me? I am your disciple. I am a follower of yours. Do you hear me? And the whole time, God is sitting up high, and he's looking down low, and he sees what's happening, but he does not rush <laughs> to the aid of his disciples, to his followers. Even in that text in Mark chapter 6, when Jesus decides to leave the mountaintop, and as he comes down, he comes out at the fourth watch of the night, okay? The fourth watch of the night. That's between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. And the word says that Jesus on purpose, okay? On purpose. And I mentioned this point in another message with the grace symbol. Watch this. Jesus 
was on purpose trying to walk past his disciples. Mm. Let that sink in. Jesus on the mountaintop, he see his disciples, his followers in a storm. He takes his time to leave where he's at to go and help them. When he leaves where he's at to actually go and help them, when he gets close to them, he is on purpose trying to walk past them. <laughs> uh, in other words, when he's trying to walk past them, what he really wants to see is, can you recognize me and can you see me when you're in a storm? I know you're in a storm because I saw you from the, from the mountaintop. I came down here to help you, to get in the storm with you. But now that I'm in the storm with you, can you recognize me when I'm in the storm with you? Hey, hey, Grace and us, sometimes God is in the storm with us and he wants to see can we recognize when he's in the storm with us. The disciples, they was like, uh, 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 they thought it was a ghost. They did not recognize it was actually Jesus when he came to help them in their situation. You see, Grace Center, watch this. God can take care of the birds, okay? We can outshine the flowers, okay? If God can take care of birds and God can take care of flowers and so forth, he will take care of us even if we're in the midst of a storm. He just wants to know, can we recognize and see his hands at work in the storm that we're in? Even in the text here, even in the text, we, we see that the disciples, they should have used their faith. Okay. They should have used their faith when they were in the storm in Mark chapter 6. The faith that they had, they should have used their faith. They should have remembered what Jesus had done beforehand. And when they were placed in a storm, the faith that they did have, they should have used that. Because a lot of times in the text, God has come back and say, oh, ye of little faith. Why didn't you use the faith that you had in the midst of the storm in which you were in? We all have faith. Faith is the one thing that pleases God. And although you may be worried about different things, use the faith in which God has given you. We all have faith and that's what we should use. As a matter of fact, it's at the end of verse number 30 here where it says, of ye of little faith. And it's un unfortunate sometimes, Grace, and I'm guilty of this as well, but we have to let worry take a back seat and let faith take over. We have to let faith drive us to where we're going and put worry in the back seat of our lives. Verse 31 and 32, and we're almost done here. It says, therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what we shall wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek for your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. It's right there. Grace said that God knows what you need. Our jobs as believers our job is to do everything we can in the natural. But let God take care of the supernatural. We do everything we can in the natural. Okay, we pray, we fast, we read our word, we be good to others. We do everything we can in the natural. Let God take care of the supernatural. You do your part, and I'm sure, I have no doubt that God is going to do his. 
Verse 33, it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. If you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness first, not second, not third, but first, he said, I'm going to add all these other things unto you. Now, if what God said is true, we should not worry. If we seek him first, his kingdom and his righteousness, the things we need, he's going to add it on to us. Okay? He's going to take care of us, but we have to seek him first. Okay? We have to place him first in our lives. He's saying, place me first, and I'm going to add other things on to you. Verse 34, and we're almost done. It says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. The Living Bible translation says it like this. It says, so don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrow too. Live one day at a time. Grace Center, don't worry about yesterday, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. God is not your only your God for today, but he's your God of tomorrow. Okay. Let God handle what's going to take place tomorrow. As a matter of fact, watch this. God has already stepped into tomorrow and taking care of tomorrow for you. So by the time you get there tomorrow, whatever was there, he has already taken care of it. God says, don't worry about what's going to happen next. Okay. Just, 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 just think about today. Focus on today. I'm going to work things out. But I'm going to do it on my schedule, on my timetable. And we worry about too many things. We worry about things as, that we think are going to happen on tomorrow or next week. And those things never come to pass a lot of times. And I'll be the first one to admit, sometimes I think about things and, um, and sometimes I, I, I may worry about certain things. And I have to tell myself, don't worry about that. God is going to take care of that. And the majority of the time, by the time I get to that situation, it has been resolved. <laughs> it is taking care of itself. It's like God has went ahead of me and took care of that situation for me. So by the time I arrived on the scene, what I thought was going to be a disaster, what I thought was going to be trouble, what I thought was going to be problematic, it was no issues whatsoever. God is saying, don't worry about tomorrow. Okay. Just think about, focus on today. I'm going to take care of your tomorrow. Just, just focus on today. Don't lose any sleep worrying about what's going to take place next. I'm closing now. Um, right now, uh, later time, she's beginning to travel more now being that although we're still in a pandemic you know a lot of companies there are they are traveling more these days so she's traveling more these days and she told a story the other day of how she had a connecting flight uh, coming back home and when one plane was about to land the plane she was on was landing she had to get onto her next flight to come home but she had a slight window a slight window to make it to that connecting flight so as when the plane landed she was texting us and saying she you know hope she can make it to her connecting flight and so forth so she was worried about you know getting onto that connecting flight and not you know she didn't know for sure if she was going to make it in time or not 
So when she got off the one flight, and she was going through the airport, running with her 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 her, her backpack and so forth, trying to get to um, the next flight. Um, she had told us that as she was on her way to get to the next flight, that she ran to the pilot of the airplane <laughs> in which she was going to be flying on. In other words, she was worried about getting onto that next connecting flight, but yet that flight could not take off until the pilot was able to get on the plane to fly the plane anyway. You see, she was worried about nothing. She was running through the airport for nothing. She was she was she had a she worked up a sweat for nothing. She fear had filled her mind for nothing. What she thought was going to happen with her missing her flight, it never happened. It, it did not take place. She was able to make her flight because the pilot was not even ready to take off anyway. You see, Grace said, when you know who your pilot is, you don't have to worry. You don't have to stress yourself. You don't have to, you don't have to you know, get to a full sweat about what's going to take place when you know that the plane cannot take off until the pilot say so. Because he's the one in charge of flying that plane. <laughs> Goodbye, Grace, and I'm gone today. My message is simple on today. And that is, don't worry. Don't worry about yesterday. Don't worry about today. Don't worry about tomorrow. God has taken care of your yesterday. God is taking care of your today. And God has already stepped into your tomorrow. He's already worked it out. Don't worry. Don't worry. Maybe you need to text someone. Maybe God has, has spoken to you throughout this message. You, you had conversations with someone. And you know what they're thinking about. You know what they're going through. Just send them a quick little text on today and say, don't worry. <laughs> Maybe get you a little sticky note. Put it on the refrigerator. Put it on your, on, on, on your mirror in your bathroom. Just put, don't worry. <laughs> Call up that friend that you know are going through some difficult challenges in their lives and let them know and tell them, don't worry. <laughs> uh, this message is for someone on today. You're frustrated. You're concerned. You're stressed. You can't sleep. You can't eat. Simple message on today. Don't worry. Whatever you're thinking about, whatever you are in fear of, most likely what you are in fear of is not going to happen. It's not going to take place. Don't worry. Look, this message is for me on today. I'm preaching to the choir on today. I have to tell myself, self, don't worry. Don't worry. It's, it's going to be all right. It's going to work out. Don't worry. Don't stress. Don't worry. 